is a car that I didn't think I'd own for a long time, but here we are, 2020 COVID times. I got it. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Garage Topics. This is my new car. This is a 2017 Chevy SS or a Holden Commodore if you're a bogan like me. So this car I bought sight unseen, which is something I've never done with a vehicle before. To make things even sketchier, this is a rebuilt title vehicle. So I'm taking a massive gamble buying something I can never see in person, take a look at, that's been wrecked and been sitting in a junkyard for a year, which is crazy. Thankfully, the, the seller was straight up guy. I got a bunch of photos, a bunch of videos from him on the vehicle, but uh, let, let, let me show you how I got this car. So before we get any further, I got some clips here of me actually picking up the car. All right, so I'm um, about to go pick up the car. Um, it's coming on a, like a three car trailer. This driveway is a little too tight, so I'm just gonna walk up down the street to a better road, but whew, I'm nervous to say the least, I've never bought a car sight unseen. Let's go find out if uh, this is all worth it. This is the most excited I've been for a car. It's also been the most pent up uh, anticipation for it as well. Um, this process has been almost a month now, um, and it's a car that I initially didn't think I was gonna be able to get, but it worked something out and was able to, so I'm super stoked. So now we wait just a couple minutes. I've been waiting around this neighborhood like a creeper, so I'm hoping it gets here soon so I can get on my way and not get called by the neighborhood watch for some creepy guy out here looking for a car. All right, so I've been waiting eh, 35, 40 minutes now. Um, there was actually a bad accident blocking this neighborhood. This thankfully there's two entrances, but the entrance he was coming in, there was a dead stop accident that no one's moved in 30 plus minutes. So <laughs> hopefully the neighborhood watch doesn't call me, but he's turning around and he should be here soon. Here she comes, I think. Oh yeah. Oh man, I'm so excited. What's good about this is I can look underneath. It's squeaky clean. So this is the this side here is what I'm curious about and it look it looks in great shape. The slight crease there, no one will ever see it because no one's looking at it from this angle. And it looks in great shape. Underneath is spotless. It is extremely clean. This is kind of nice being able to look at this. This car's from Chicago, so I was worried there was rust, but there's not a drop, not a speck of it. I trusted someone to show me the ropes of what this car's detail was, how, what condition it was in, how it drove, etc. And I'd never driven it, never looked at it in person, paid it for it, and received it on a truck. So the whole process of buying this car was pretty intimidating, but for the deal I got on this car and what exactly what I wanted for this car, it, I kind of was willing to take this big risk for hopefully a reward and I'll let you determine if this was a reward or not. This car is a car that I have wanted for a very, very long time. Most people had pictures of Lamborghinis in their bedroom wall. I had pictures of Holden Commodores, specifically race car Holden Commodores and some street ones as well, but originally born in Australia, I wanted a manual transmission holding Commodore four-door for as long as I can remember. Um, I now live in the United States, so this is a Chevy SS, and this is a 2017. It has 18,000 miles on it, just uh, under 19,000 now. Um, it is the last year that they made these. Holden stopped making Australian vehicles in 2017. Super sad day, but just kind of the times over there. You're gonna buy a Camry more than you're gonna buy this. This gets worse gas mileage than a Camry and costs twice as much. So they went defunct. I wanted one. I was hoping to buy one new, but time didn't line. But here we are. I'm the second owner of this, and I couldn't be more happy. If you've got a keen eye, you'll notice that this has a couple small different things from when I first picked up the vehicle, but let me show you them right now. All right, if you've got a keen eye, you'll notice the front is different from the videos. 
main thing is the Holden badge. So when I got the car, it was full Chevy SS spec. You could actually buy these cars from the dealership when you pre-ordered them with Holden badges on it. So don't, mean, don't give me crap about that. Other things I've done though, so I bought this whole grill and everything from a dealership online. In addition to that, this surrounding piece for the front grill and this lower grill surrounding piece is all chrome. You could buy this black. Um, it was sold at dealerships in the States. Uh, it's a Holden part specifically. So I went ahead and did that. The only thing left on the front to de-chrome is this front daytime running light piece. They're out of stock when I bought it, but for right now, I kind of like the contrast. It, it definitely had too much chrome, in my opinion, up front before, but now it's just right, specifically with the stock wheels. Uh, I think this combo looks good. The back's the same deal. Actually, when you buy the front grille, it comes with the back badge as well. There's two little holes in here that help you align it, and then the rest has the stickiness on the back. So this actually doesn't match the Holden equivalent in Australia. Um, it has a badge here and a badge here. For now, I'm gonna pay homage to both of them. So we've got the Holden badges, the Australian equivalent, and then this is the American SS badging. Um, they were called SSVs in Australia, but it was a slightly different font of SS. So kind of neat to play the two together. And finally, my Bogan license plates make sense here. So if you don't know what a Bogan is, Google it. But basically, just imagine me wearing it uh, tank top, some really short jorts, uh, some work boots, drinking a bunch of beer and smoking and showing up to Walmart. Other mods I made is the tint. Uh, these don't have any tint with them stock. This is 35% all the way around. This is legal in Kentucky. The other thing I did is the side marker lamps. Those were fully chrome and they come in black from Australia. So I bought that part again. It was a GM part I could buy in America. That side piece matches the hood vent. It's actually, these actually are functional. There's two little holes or three holes here. Not the most functional, but I thought it was weird that that would be the black color and that was chrome. This black has a slight uh, pearl metallic into it, so when you buy the factory GM stuff, it all matches up. Last mod that I didn't include you guys on, which I promise I'll include you in the future, is a steering wheel. So it's just a G GM Holden steering wheel. Literally took five minutes to replace. Um, super easy, just had to disconnect the battery to make it safe, but that way it matches the whole Holden vibe. There's still more Holden to go. Need some center caps here, and when you turn on the dash, it's all Chevy and such. We'll get to that later, and I'll make a video about it, but wanted to show you that. All right, while we're in here, let's talk about the non-compromise, which is the manual transmission, my Lanta. I've wanted one of these for so long. I'm so glad I finally have one. It makes this car. The automatic is nice, but I just, just me, I wanted the manual, I wanted the three pedals, and it is one of the easiest manual transmissions to drive that I've done in a long time. We'll do a review here in, inside driving it in a second, but man, it was, it was the only non-compromise. All right, we're at another location because I was being attacked by a swarm of bees over there randomly. So. I mentioned this car's rebuilt title. Would you guess that this side was completely destroyed? I, I, did, I couldn't. The photos and the videos that I got from the seller, like they were spot on. I saw the before photos, which I put up now. It, it, was, a, it was a side swipe, which the, the reason to me why it got totaled is because of the expense of replacing every single panel being brand new. So uh, it, it would have required the front bumper, the headlight, the side fender, both doors, lower um, trim piece, rear quarter panel, rear back bumper. And so the front bumper and the front fender are new to my knowledge. The doors are used, they're just repainted. Uh, the lower panel, I'm not sure. But you cannot tell, and I think a part of the reason why you can't tell is because the paint was in such new condition that when you put new paint on, it just blends perfectly. There's some small, small details that you can tell that something's happened. Um, I, I might try and t tweak them, but literally only I know. If you didn't know, it'd be fine. Um, I'm really happy how well this car is being put back together. It drives phenomenal, drives like an 18,000 mile car, and literally you can't tell anything's happened to it. The only test of time will be the paint quality, but if it starts flaking on this side, I'll just have the whole thing repainted. But really, it's, it's in great shape. This color, as I mentioned, Slipstream Blue, was my number two choice. My number one was actually, a, uh, I think it's Royal Peacock Green, or Regal Peacock Green. It's a super dark green. I've never seen that color in person before, so it would have been a gamble getting it. This one, however, I'd never seen it in person as well. Thankfully, I had a buddy in town who had literally the exact same year color everything, so I got to test drive it to make sure that I was making the right decision. I'd never actually driven a Chevy S before, 
a let alone a manual transmission version. I've driven plenty of fifth gen Camaros. If you've driven a fifth gen Camaro, the pedal feel and, every, and the, just the experience is very similar, but honestly, I, I like this car a whole lot more. These come with big old Brembo's up front and uh, the back. Uh, the 2016, 2017 had this style wheel. Let me know in the comments if you like this style of wheel. I'm thinking about upgrading, to be honest with you, so let me know your thoughts. But right now, they look great. The rear has new tires. The front have old tires, which is why I'm thinking about just replacing the wheels, getting new tires all in one bang. But these brakes are incredible. They're great. I've done enough talking about the exterior of this car. Let's show the interior. And once we show the interior, let's take it on the drive because honestly, that's what makes this car so great. It's incredible to drive. Having owned a G8 before, the, the vibe of this car is very similar, but it is a whole lot nicer. Just the materials and everything is just so much nicer. Um, the only bummer, the headliner and all the pillars are tan instead of black. I might change that in the future, but anyways, like the steering wheel is one of my favorites. It's so perfectly thick in the right spots and feels great. So you don't have to worry about upgrading that. The seats are cooled and heated, which are incredible for a hot boy like me. And there's a bunch of room for passengers and it's a very comfortable car. All right. We're live here, we're gonna have some good shots in a second, but a couple things I wanted to point out before we get going that are favorite to me. Um, cup holders are nice here. I love that the power windows are on the actual door and the G8, they're in the middle. You spill your drink, it goes everywhere. This has the uh, magnetic ride control, which is incredible. So you can go from soft, medium to stiff. Um, that also adjusts the exhaust. Right now we are in tour mode. And so that's the quietest, softest. You probably won't be able to hear it, but when I switch this here, it gets louder. It opens up a valve in the muffler, which is great. Um, I, for this one, we'll, we'll keep it in tour. I mean, we'll keep it in sport. Um, electronic parking brake, I thought I would hate this because you can't rip it to do hooning, but honestly, I'm not hooning in this car right now, so this actually is a nice feature. My, one of my favorite features is the cooled seat. It's a game changer if you've got serious issues like me that keeps you nice and cool good to go um, there's a bunch of like lane warning departures and blind spot monitoring etc and it's got a heads-up display let's see if we can get this to turn on if you can see it or not it's pretty bright out so I can't even see it yeah there you go you can barely see it but it's a nice feature to have um, the only thing I wish this car had was I wish it had Android Auto, CarPlay, but it picks up Bluetooth just fine. Like I mentioned before, the quality of the everything in here is so much nicer. These seats are super nice, nice soft leather. It's got this Alcantara on here, it's on the doors, it's on the dash as well. And the back seat gets a nice treatment as well. So, very happy with this. This one has a sunroof. Um, and that's about it, so let's get going for a drive. Okay, parking brake off. Oh, we gotta press the proc brake to do that. Clutch in, first gear, got my seat adjusted. It's in sport mode. Track and string control is all on and everything. And I mentioned earlier, the clutch pedal on this is incredibly easy to use. It, it, it's super soft. There's so much torque in this car that you can take your foot off the clutch without any gas and it'll just go. Uh, hopefully the camera holds on. Hold on a second. I'm just gonna, not gonna do anything crazy, but I'm gonna feel it. Holy crap, that's crazy. It's still cut in uh, ABS and everything. I just felt that, but damn, I forgot this car is pretty crazy. All right, let's get going. Now that we got that out of the system, let's go drive like normal adults, which is the beauty of this car. I can put the track control all back on. I can put it back in tour mode and softly cruise, but if I want to hoon, I can. So that's why I think this car is an incredible car. Take my bias out of it as far as wanting one of these for a long time. These are such a great daily driver car for someone that is a car enthusiast but has responsibilities. My responsibility is our daughter. I wouldn't trade her for the world. And honestly, it was kind of a catalyst for me getting this car. It's not the main reason why I got it. I wanted, I wanted one of these without a kid, but it kind of pushed me to actually get one. So now, um, whenever she goes into daycare, I will be able to pick her up in the back and uh, when she's not in the car, I can hoon around a little bit, but when she's in the car, she's precious cargo. Um, this car has 415 horsepower, 410, 415 pound of feet of torque. I guess that's all at the flywheel. Um, so it's a pretty peppy car. Um, 
it's nowhere near as fast as my Corvette was because this thing weighs just shy of 4,000 pounds and has a little bit less horsepower. But there are some simple mods you can do to this car, which I'm contemplating doing, which we'll get into in another episode. But I will modify this slightly, but it, primary purpose of this car is a nice, comfortable daily driver. So anything that ruins that ability to drive nice and be comfortable and be reliable, not doing it, at least for the time being. I'll have another hot rod for that to actually do stuff with. Stay tuned on that. All right, I'm gonna turn this little traction control off, which will keep all the stability on, which will let the wheel slip a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna row it through here. Okay, so going about 15, I'm gonna floor it and go through the gears. God, this is quick. It's my Corvette was a whole lot faster than this, but cons considering I normally drive this like a nice, sane human being, God, this thing scoots. It is a certified scooter. It's uh, it's such a fun car to drive. That car behind me probably like, what the heck's that guy doing? I didn't realize that Malibu was so quick. That's another thing. This car gets a lot of gripe because it looks kind of like just a general Malibu or something like that. The Holden badges really change that. And especially when you start removing some of the chrome trim, it looks a lot more aggressive. And I'm glad I did that. There'll be more to come on that. But those mods there make it look a whole lot less Malibu-like. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, this driving this thing regularly is incredibly nice to drive. It's very quiet. Um, right now it's in sport, so... It, once I change it to Tour, the suspension gets even softer, the exhaust gets even quieter. It's a pleasant place to be. But if you want to turn it up to even, uh, I think it's called performance mode, it really stiffens up the, the suspension, makes you feel like you're riding on stiff coilovers. The steering gets super tight and the exhaust stays as loud as it was in the other modes as well. So let me know in the comment section below if you think this was a gamble buying a rebuilt title vehicle. but. For me, so far, there's been some small fixes I've had to make, don't get me wrong, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a car guy, so I don't mind fiddling a little bit, and uh, you can get great deals on rebuilt vehicles if you know how to buy it correctly. Expect to pay anywhere from 20 to 40% less than what a regular vehicle pricing would go, and, and at the same time, expect that when you go to sell it as well. Something I would never really consider, some people do, but I just do not want to fool with it. I wouldn't consider buying a rebuilt title vehicle in just a generic car. Um, it, it's so, there's this so dime a dozen, they make hundreds of thousands of Civics, you can find a nice one. And when you go to sell it, there's hundreds of thousands for sale, so no one's going to pick your car. Whereas this car is pretty rare, an enthusiast is going to buy it, so they, they know the difference between a good rebuilt and a bad rebuilt title vehicle. So I have no problems driving this. As long as it's good for me, that's what we're primarily after. I'm more concerned about me having a good car experience. And honestly, this drives like a brand new car. It still smells new in here as well. It's a, it's a treat to drive. All right, do a little twisty driving up here. It's about to start storming here any second. So I'm gonna get back to the house. All right, the little... And so it gets louder in here because the intake, there's a tube literally sh pushing sound into the cabin of this car. You can block that off. I might do that because it sounds kind of obnoxious, sounds kind of fake. A big difference of these cars over like a Charger, let's say, is to my opinion, these weight mean that that's not opinion, this is facts. They weigh a whole lot less. The opinion piece though is they're a lot nicer to drive. Like this is so nimble. A Charger, it's great for driving on the highway and just cruising and so is this. But when you take this in the twisties, this car performs where that feels a little bit sluggish in my opinion. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy this car. Uh, it's more so than I thought I would. There's a little Tony section up here. Someone's coming up so it's so just not going to hit the brakes like a regular car you would. Just the mag ride just stiffens right up. It feels great. Uh, it, it's this car just begs you to drive it a little bit aggressively. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an absolute dream to drive. Railroad track. Make sure no trains are coming. <laughs> the, the 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 tune on this. It's like a crackle tune, I guess. It, it's always popping in the back. It sounds awesome. Some people th might think it's cheesy. I love it. I think it sounds great. 
uh, it makes you feel like you've got a little bit of a more aggressive car than what it is. Because otherwise, you got it in tour mode driving around, no one thinks anything twice of you. Uh, the blue probably gives it away a little bit more, but it's a very sleeper car. It's not that aggressive in your face. There's mods you can do to make it look like that, which I probably will do in the future. But for now, I'm just going to drive it, do some small tweaks to make it mine, and I'm going to take you guys through that journey of what things to make it mine, what mods I think are the best for it. And again, any questions or comments about the car, let me know in the comment section, but any mods you think are worthwhile doing, let me know. I'm all ears. Oops, actually, nope. I forgot, I've got to go buy some milk. Milky milk, 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 milk. All right, so I'm gonna get home, get going. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There will be plenty more videos to come. I am in love with this car. Um, I'm not gonna jinx myself and say I'm never gonna sell it because everything you gotta sell at some point. But man, I right now I'm just loving life, loving this car. And it's also cool to me, and becoming a dad has changed my perspective a little bit on life. I'm sure it happens to everyone. I still love cars. But the thought of being able to enjoy a car and also being able to take my daughter and family with us to go do, do things like, I'd love to go take this thing to Tale of the Dragon. We could have a nice little drive there as a family and then drop the kid and my uh, wife off at some like candle shop and then go hoon this in the mountains. I think that'd be a lot of fun. All right, I'm gonna floor it, get out of here. Catch you later, peace out, Club Duty Fresh.